Coming up on today's show, Volkswagen readies a new over-the-air software update that will make its ID3 and ID4 electric cars charge at a higher power level, reducing charging time. The ordering process and hinted specs for the Ford F-150 Lightning get revealed, and Hoonigan Kenblock shows off the first electric car built for him by Audi, so he can go Jim Carner it. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to your weekly news roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. T-E-N. It is great to see you again. Make sure you hit the bell and subscribe, and if you're so inclined, become a patron over at patreon.com. We're producing our biggest budget videos yet, so anything you can send over our way would be gratefully appreciated. We've finished our two-week sponsorship with YouGears from last week, but keep your eyes peeled because we've got some more models to share with you on the way, and if you did get one, let us know below which model it was. Today's show is sponsored by the Electric Vehicle Association. New name, but the same great organisation that could help you transition to a cleaner future and help you finance your own clean energy or transportation purchase. We start today's show with news that Volkswagen is about to push version 3 of its vehicle operating system for its ID3 and ID4 electric vehicles. As teased by Volkswagen Group CEO Dr. Herbert Dies on LinkedIn this week, the new software update improves a whole host of things inside the car, improving the functionality of Volkswagen's ID Lite and tweaking the augmented reality head-up display, if fitted. There's also tweaks to the voice control software for a more natural language experience and improvements to the park assist function, handing over more control to the car when parking. Semi-autonomous functionality has been increased too, with automatic lane change on indicator tap when in semi-autonomous cruise control. But perhaps the most important feature for customers is an improvement to the car's charge level, fitted with the larger 77 kilowatt hour packs. Maximum charge speed has been upped to 135 kilowatts from 125 kilowatts, cutting a whole nine minutes off a five to eight percent charge under ideal conditions. Just over a week ago, while Winter was out driving the Porsche Taycan GTS Sport Turismo, check out his first drive to port below if you haven't, Kate Walton Elliott was on a different launch trip driving the Hyundai Ioniq 5. And while that video isn't quite ready to publish yet, we are working on it as quickly as we can, Hyundai has wasted no time after the press launch, announcing the starting price of its US market Ioniq 5, as well as beginning deliveries. At $40,925 US dollars before incentives, but including destination charges, the entry-level Ioniq 5 is priced to directly compete against the Volkswagen ID4 and Nissan Aria not to mention the Ford Mustang Mark E. Meanwhile, the more expensive, long-range, all-wheel drive variant starts from just shy of $45,000, with the highest spec model touching 47 and change. Kate really enjoyed her drive, and I cannot wait to share it with you, so keep your eyes peeled. It's coming very soon. Promise? Rivian published its first quarterly earnings report this week, showing that, just like other automotive startups before it, becoming a profitable automaker is hard. With what it says are 71,000 pre-orders for its R1T and R1S on its books, up from 48,000 in September, Rivian stated that it raised $1 million in revenue during Q3, essentially off the back of the first 11 R1Ts it delivered at the end of the quarter. Q4 deliveries continue to ramp up, with both R1T and R1S customers now getting their trucks, and an expected thousand or so vehicles likely to be delivered by the end of this year. This is a few hundred vehicles less than Rivian Rivian had aimed to deliver. And while that figure may be small, remember that Rivian is also rolling out Amazon-branded electric delivery vehicles, meaning overall production is higher than it might appear. During Q3, Rivian reported $1.2 billion of losses on a GAAP basis, slightly more than Wall Street had hoped. As part of its earnings call, Rivian also announced it's building a new $5 billion assembly plant east of Atlanta, Georgia, with the goal of building vehicles there by 2024 to supplement its Illinois facility. This week, the last of Ford's 2021 model year Mustang Mark E's roll off the production line, and we're readying the official start of 2022 model year Mark E production next week. 
And that means that Ford is releasing details of what's changed for the model year. Last week, we told you about the price increases, and this week, the official EPA ratings are out. Although the Mark E uses the same battery pack as it did in previous model years, Ford has unlocked more range by reducing the battery buffer a little. This means a standard range car like the Select and Premium Standard Range Rear Wheel Drives are given an extra 17 miles, 27 kilometers of range, while the Premium Extended All Wheel Drive versions get an extra seven miles, 11 kilometers. Interestingly, the GT and GT Performance variants don't officially get a range increase, but they do get access to the same capacity as the non-GT models. Ford plans to roll out the increased range capabilities as an OTA for previous model years, so watch this space. It's no secret that Toyota has, for a very long time, been a little hostile towards the idea of fully electric vehicles, producing its first and second generation excellent Toyota RAV4 EVs as compliance cars and choosing instead to focus on hydrogen fuel cell and hybrid technology. But this week, Toyota surprised everyone by holding a major news conference at which it teased concepts of some of the 30 new electric vehicles it wants to make by 2030. All with the BZ prefix to their name, BZ meaning beyond zero, the company showcased many concepts, including a mid-sized SUV, mid-sized sedan, full-size SUV with third row seats, and a pickup truck, as well as a hot hatch, FJ Land Cruiser inspired 4x4, and even a two-seat sports car. Along with these vehicles, Toyota also showcased the microbox and mid-box commercial vans. At the center of its push, the company promise is a affordability rather than range or performance. Given Toyota's interest and investment in solid-stage batteries, which should lead the way to more affordable vehicles, that strategy, while late, could just pay off. However, we are going to have to wait and see. With the Ford F-150 Lightning reservations closing off last week as Ford hit 200,000 hand raisers, Ford is now readying itself to let customers transition those reservations into confirmed orders. This week, we learned some of how that process will work, with several sites leaking the booklet that Ford prepared for dealers to explain the ordering process. Starting in January, Ford and its dealerships will begin reaching out to reservation holders to convert those reservations into confirmed orders. Ford will also allow dealerships to promise a certain number of customers per dealer. The number will depend on how many reservations the dealership has on its books. It also looks, although not to be confirmed, that Platinum and Lariat models will be the first to ship, followed by XLT and Pro. There's already price gouging going on, but not all dealers are price gouging. Also revealed this week, through an unconfirmed secondary source, is the claimed battery capacity of the larger range pack, 130 kilowatt hours usable. Given expected efficiency though, we personally remain unconvinced of that particular figure. As part of the Biden administration's announcement of its intention to expand the number of electric vehicle charging stations from the 100,000 sites in the US today to more than half a million, Vice President Harris was filmed this week plugging a Chevrolet Bolt EV into a public charging station. And while, while the experience was a great photo opportunity, she came under some significant fire for not appearing to know how to use the charging station, asking how drivers know it's working, since, as she said, there's no glugging of gasoline or vibration as you would get with a gas pump. The EV community and certain political groups jumped on this apparent lack of knowledge as an indication that the White House is somehow disinterested in EVs. But here at the channel, we're taking a different approach. While we'd have rather seen more preparedness from the White House, Vice President Harris's questions perfectly echo the many, many people who reach out to us on a weekly basis asking really basic questions about EVs and EV ownership. We are in a bubble of our own and sometimes it's all too easy to forget that not everyone has the same experiences that we do. More education is the key. Last year, Nissan Europe announced that it would be closing the Nissan Barcelona plant where European market NV200s were made, including the EMV200 minivan, panel van, and taxi. There were significant attempts to keep the factory open with both regional and national attempts to encourage Nissan to stay in Barcelona. But earlier this week, the plant did sadly close, ending many years of ENV200 production in Europe. This means that the ENV200 is officially no more in terms of production, with remaining stock due to be sold off, but no more due to be made. As someone who would have purchased an ENV200 for my family had I stayed in the UK, 
I've got to say that I am sad to see this vehicle go. Even though the ENV200 had its flaws and it wasn't exactly a comfortable ride, its versatility as a people carrier was really unmatched. Nissan does have plans for a replacement vehicle, the Nissan Townstar, but it isn't being produced yet. It's due to enter into production sometime next year at a facility in France owned by the Renault-Nissan-Mitsubishi Alliance. Unless you've lived in Europe or you happen to be a complete car nerd, you may not know about the special vehicle classifications that allow low-speed, low-power vehicles to be sold and driven sans permis, quite literally without a license in some countries. Although these days most European countries do actually require you to have one. An offshoot of a French law designed to let citizens drive small vehicles in remote rural areas, the Sans Permis class has led to many awesome cars, including the diminutive Citroën Ami, an all-electric two-seat low-speed EV. We have covered it several times before on the channel, and because of extremely high demand, the car and its rebadged Opel, Vauxhall and Peugeot siblings is selling well. But this week, Citroën cashed in on the demand for this ultra-cute, ultra-affordable EV and showcased a new concept based on the same, the My Ami Buggy Concept. It's a cute derivative without doors that's part beach buggy, part golf buggy, and 200% character. Just sign me up, please. While a lot of our channel's coverage comes from European and North American sources, because that's where the majority of our audience is based, we're always eager to cover cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation from other nations. And Swedish-Kenyan company Opibus is one such company we love to cover. Committed to help sub-Saharan Africans electrify their transportation, Opibus has helped electrify everything from public bus services to safari vehicles used by tour companies and wildlife reserve rangers. It's even been working to help citizens and communities generate their own power with photo voltaic solar panels and wind turbine installations. But its biggest impact to date is probably its electric motorcycle program, which has helped convert Kenya's immense motorcycle fleet to electric. And this week, the company announced a new partnership with Uber that will see 3,000 electric motorcycles deployed for use by Uber across the continent. I cannot wait to see how this one shapes up. It's almost time for short shorts, but first, a quick question. Have you thought about becoming a patron? While we do have multiple sources of income on the channel, there's YouTube ad revenue, a little third-party production work, and a white-label version of this show for a client in New Zealand, the overwhelming majority of our income comes from the kind support of people like you. This means we can stay independent and impartial while ensuring everyone gets paid a fair wage for the work they do. At the same time, though, as the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter vehicles expands, We've got more work to do than ever before. And that means hiring more people, like our recent video editor, Michael. And in case you're wondering, yes, it was Michael who edited the Porsche Taycan GTS Sport Turismo video this week. So if you liked that video and you want to help us grow, please consider supporting us. There's a link below. And now it really is time for Short Shorts. The Mazda 2 Hybrid has just launched and is basically a rebadged Toyota Yaris Hybrid built in partnership with Toyota. But Mazda is now going one step further, copying Toyota's misleading self-charging hybrid advertising claims. It's not self-charging, it uses petrol. Audi is earmarking 18 billion euro for investment in expanding the electrification of its lineup. But even though Audi has some pretty great EVs already and plans for more, just remember that electrification does include hybrids and mild hybrids, as well as fully electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles. The UK government has slashed the amount of grant money it offers to help drivers switch to electric vehicles, while also lowering the price cap on how much those vehicles can cost. The EV grant and price caps are now about one half of what they were a year ago. Livewire, the electric motorcycle brand spun off Harley-Davidson, is going public with a SPAC merger to become the first publicly traded US motorcycle company in history. You all probably know our views on SPACs by now, but hey, if it leads to more bikes... The solar electric automaker Lightyear has announced plans for a new model. The Lightyear 2 is planned to cost under 35,000 US dollars or equivalent, and the company has already signed a deal with Lease Plan for 5,000 of them. 
Canoe has ended its relationship with vehicle manufacturer VDL Nedcar in order to focus on US manufacturing. Canoe is apparently now in talks with VDL Group BV for its European plants, and Canoe's modular vehicle design is unlike anything we've seen thus far. Carlos Ghosn, the former CEO of Nissan and current international fugitive, was a key driver in Nissan's early push into electric vehicles. But now he's heavily criticizing his former employer in a recent interview for what he sees as squandering its early lead in the EV space. Arrival has unveiled the first prototype of a car designed exclusively for use by ride-sharing services. Designed in collaboration with Uber drivers, it's quite different to most EVs on the market. Keep your eyes peeled because we would love to put one of these through its paces. Six current and former employees of Tesla have filed a joint lawsuit against the automaker, alleging that the company foisted a culture of sexual harassment. Accounts include leadership unresponsive to concerns and supervisors who allegedly participated in harassment. We are unaware of a statement from Tesla on this matter at the current time. Audi is recalling a small number of US-based e-tron GT performance sedans for issues with the air suspension system. The Porsche Taycan, which is built on the same platform, suffered much more significant and widespread suspension recalls throughout this year. Photos of a Tesla Model S prototype on Tesla's test track are showing signs that the refreshed Model S and X may be getting a new taillight design and charging inlet. The changes seem to support a CCS charging port, which could be an indication for a European model or a changed US model. A coalition of 15 major automakers, though six of those are part of Volkswagen Automotive Group, have sent a letter to Pete Buttigieg pushing for a rapid expansion of high-speed DC fast charging infrastructure along US highways, which is critical for EV adoption. Toyota's luxury mark Lexus has shown its first EV for the US market. The RZ450e is built on the same ETNGA platform as the brand new BZ4X crossover from Toyota something that is evident in its styling. We don't know a whole lot more right now, so watch this space. The successor to Volvo's popular XC90 crossover will be built on a dedicated EV platform. And now there are rumors that it may also get a new name, with hints that it may be called the Embla, after the first female in Norse mythology. It sure beats letters and numbers. Celebrating 35 years building cars at its Sunderland production facility, Nissan has converted a 1986 Nissan Bluebird sedan to an all-electric model and called it the New Bird. Of course, it uses a Nissan Leaf drivetrain built at the facility, as well as a 40 kWh battery pack. After years of promising the moon on a stick, SEC investigations and more, the impossible has just happened. Nikola Motors has actually delivered a truck, its first Nikola Trey truck. However, it is a battery electric rather than hydrogen fuel cell electric variant, and it's going to be used at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. Daimler Motorcycles has opened the books for its Hyperfighter Colossus motorcycle, ahead of its CES unveiling. The bike has 200 horsepower, a 20 kilowatt hour battery, and a sub three second sprint time, but only 100 will be built. Last week, I told you that South Korean battery manufacturer LG Energy Solutions was preparing for an IPO, and now it's official. LGE's IPO is scheduled for January and will likely be one of the largest in the South Korean industrial history. The Formula E Race Series Season 8 calendar has been set for 2022, along with some tweaks to the qualifying process and point system. Season 8 will run from January to August with races in the Americas, Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. U.S. nonprofit Plug in America has announced the recipients of its fourth annual Drive Electric Awards, and this year's recipients include Dr. Andy Frank, Tom Saxton, Liani Multa, and my dear friend and former editor John Volker. From a past recipient to current ones, congratulations! What was initially reported as a suspicious death at Tesla's Fremont production facility has turned out to be a shooting death of one Tesla employee by another. Not much else is known about the tragedy right now, but our hearts and thoughts go out to the victim's family and co-workers. The Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierra have long been siblings, so with an EV Silverado being officially revealed next month, the recent announcement of the EV Sierra isn't a surprise. The GMC Sierra EV will only be available in top-spec Denali trim. 
And speaking of the all-electric Silverado, we recently learned that reservations for Chevy's first electric pickup truck in 24 years will open on January 5th, which is when the vehicle will be officially revealed during a CES 2020 keynote by Mary Barra. While there is a pilot program underway to open up Tesla superchargers in North America to non-Tesla vehicles, a recent video claiming to show a Ford Mustang mach -E charging at a supercharger was bumpkiss. It was misleading. But as <clears throat> we trolled later in this week, it's not how supercharging works. Agricultural and heavy machine manufacturer John Deere has been making moves towards electrification for some time, and it's just acquired Chrysler Electric, known for its EV conversions and technology, to accelerate that process. Ford has announced its new Ford Pro Charging Program, which aims to help commercial clients transition to electric vehicles through a combination of charging hardware and enterprise charging management software and integration tools. With Nissan looking to expand its EV lineup, the company is also looking to grow its battery recycling capabilities beyond its Japanese operations. It's now announced plans to build its first battery recycling facilities in Europe and the North Americas by 2025. Several small tweaks, including improved heat pump efficiency, transmission refinements, and lower rolling resistance tires, are giving the Opel and Vauxhall Corsa E and Mocha E a bit of a boost in range. 6% for the Corsa E and 4% for the Mocha E. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. If there's one company we've seen go through an incredible amount of growth this year, it's Indian firm Ola Electric, which has not only seen its Ola S1 and Ola S1 Pro enjoy incredibly high pre-order demand, but also a dramatic rise in the company's valuation. This week, Ola officially began deliveries of the Ola S1, its first highway-capable scooter. This week, Ola began official deliveries of the Ola S1, one of its first highway-capable scooters. Built with urban and suburban routes in mind, the scooter has a top speed of around 70 miles per hour, which is 130 kilometers per hour, and is proving very popular with customers. The first cities to get the Ola S1 and its own network of charging stations are the South Indian cities of Bengaluru and Chennai, while the price, 99,990 rupees, or about 6,500 US dollars is on the expensive side, the company hopes to trickle down its electric vehicle technology from the S1 and S1 Pro to more budget-oriented models in the future. Watch this space. And finally, when it comes to tyre squealing, high precision driving, there are few people out there that can match the sheer skill and showmanship of Ken Block, aka The Hoonigan. And for many years, Block has enjoyed a partnership with Ford, showcasing his skills and Ford's engineering with lavish, highly choreographed Jim Carner videos. But earlier this year, we learned that Ken Block was ending his exclusivity contract with Ford and was looking to work with other companies as well, Audi being one of them. This week, we got to see the fruit of that new relationship with Block teasing the all-electric Audi S1 e-tron Quattro car that Audi has built for him. In a 15-minute video on his channel, Block explores the engineering and design work that went into his new car, aka the Hoonitron. And while we didn't get to see him drive it, we cannot wait for that day to happen. And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, a huge thank you to the Electric Vehicle Association for sponsoring today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. The EVA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make your own switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator and point you in the direction of monthly mind-ups for like-minded EV fans. And if you become a member, you'll gain access to a new clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EVA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. Find out more by heading to electricauto.org. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell, both for this channel and Transport Evolved Take Two. And don't forget to visit our swag store as well. Oh, and if you're feeling chatty, just head to our Discord server. It's free and the link is below. We're always welcoming of new Patreon supporters, or you can send us something through Ko-fi or Bitcoin, and anything you can send will be greatly appreciated and will go directly towards either paying the salaries of the five people now on the team, or making sure that we make it safely to CES next month. I will be back next week with another Roundup show, but until then, keep your eyes peeled for some truly amazing content from the rest of the team. And as always, keep evolving!